Living in New York was quite different. The first rent I ever paid was a loft that I sublet from John Hallecker. It was the top floor and it was a Cold War flat. Uh, and uh, I paid $15 a month. Do you ever know about the gas meter trick? Yes. Yeah, with the I gas do. meter. <laughs> you yeah. take the gas meter. That's right. I you know. take it off and you put a jumper on, you know, the, so the gas goes through. And then you take a vacuum cleaner and you run it backwards. And the, the little numbers go. Bup, 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 bup. <laughs> Word had gotten out that there was something important happening down there. Yeah, right. And among the f maybe 50 or 60 people involved, uh, with the abstract expressionist uh, movement, um, debates happened, you know, and, and sometimes quite furious. And sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> I, got, I got scars to prove it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> One of the first um, shows in the Tanager was a group show, and it had a beautiful pond on the back wall, Hoffman, everybody. You know, and uh, <laughs> Leo Castelli came over to help us hang it. And uh, <laughs> he, we listened to him and said, oh, yes, yes, yes. And he left. And then we went ahead doing what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was at, at, at the five spot, and Billie Holiday came in. Yeah. And so everyone says, go up and sing. And she didn't have a card. And so we said, look, if a cop comes in, we'll kill him. <laughs> so, 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 so she sang. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. One day I found myself talking to a group of people, two or three, and uh, a bum came up. And he held his hand out, you know, to us. And, and uh, None of us had any money, except Cooney had enough to do a typical thing for him to do. He was a very generous man. Uh, he reached in his pocket and had some coins and put them in the, the, the bum's hand. You know, he didn't say thank you or anything, he just looked at them. And started out across the, uh, Third, Third Avenue. And we were watching. And these cars are coming in, you know, almost hitting him. And we're watching with horror. And he gets to the center. And he, he hasn't paid any, all he's doing is, look, he says. And he wobbles around a little bit in the, and then starts across the rest of it. And cars are going this way and so And uh, he disappears around the corner, right? And, and we're silent. I mean, we were just really overcome with yeah, glad, and, but, uh, you know, terrified. And de Kooning said, um, there's a man who understands space. <laughs> I started out as a carver. I carved wood and stone. I carved granite, which is like a bitch to carve. You, you hit the pieces of steel go into your arm and pieces of stone, you know. When I came to New York, you know, there was always some lumber on the streets and stuff, you know. And so I started building out, I mean, I was expanding out into space. Felt of, like aware of like the three-dimensionality of the thing. All during the 50s, I was in, in one little group in the evening and have a model and, and work from her. It's always been uh, something that I drew. I mean, if you're using figures to try to ent have them enter, as you work, the figures change, radically so. How do you relate these forms to the surrounding, the environment? And, uh, that was a big problem. I make some little drawings, and I think I'll use one. So I mix some paint, and I put it on with this idea that it's a drawing hat. About 10 minutes later, this is absolute. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. 
I don't do anything, this is going to be this or this is going to be that. I just carve random shapes out of the trees, you know, and uh, I just have this stockpile of things. I just grab a whole bunch of them and then start building with them, you know. Everything stands on three legs. That's because three is the magic number and it's also, you know, it'll stand anywhere. I hate symmetry. You know, symmetry is like boom, 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 boom. With your paintings, you have different kinds of That's right, that's why thing. I said yeah, the flat right. plane. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Since I'm interested in figuration, uh, it means that there be a um, transformation in the figure. They're in a constant shift. You think this relationship is one, but then you get over here and you relate that to here, and this has to change. I think we share this interest in, um, so that if you look at, at one of his sculptures, a big beam comes up this way, and then there's something here, and this way, and there's a shape of space. And as you move around it, it compels you to participate in that transformation. Yeah. It may not be true, That's but... That's <laughs> very true, it's very true, yeah, yeah. You have to walk around it to yes. know it, you yes. know, yes. you know? I just finished a piece. I didn't finish it. And this damn thing, I hated it. I just kept adding to it, adding to it, adding to it. I mean, I keep counterbalancing it. And I just finally tore the whole damn thing down. It's the first time I've ever done something I really couldn't stand, you know. And I immediately started another piece and it's just like sailing right along. I spent my life tearing things apart and I'm an immense number of canvases that I ruined by overthinking and mm -hmm. overdoing and adjusting and all that stuff. Right. Decision-making in painting or in sculpture uh, doesn't come from the, you know, the rational. So the decision is resting or coming from some, a deeper level of the person. To get to that place in, in you, when you're working is the best thing to have in the studio. <laughs> when I think about my sculpture, it's like I like to dance. You really feel the movement yeah. of the, you know, like a Klein with a brush. Yeah. You know, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like really, yeah. Yeah.